Hey guys, how you doing? Today I'm doing a video on the cable types that should be used in gardens, what their pros and cons are, and I will go through each one, one by one. So first of all, I'm going to start with SWA. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to apologise. Every so often you can see me glance off to the right, and it's because I've got notes actually written for this video. Um, I wanted to make sure that I covered all of the content in the video and I've had a few videos where I kind of just ramble. You haven't seen them uploaded because I've gone on too long. So anyway, SWA, or, so it's commonly known as SWA, it's actually steel wire armoured and the steel wire bit comes from, well, this steel wire that actually goes around the outside and the armoured bit from the fact that it's quite tough. Um, it first appeared in its current form as a PVC cable in 1969 under BS 6346. Before that uh, it would have been probably tar and, tar and he hessian or tar and paper um, or even lead sheathed. Um, there was something that existed like this. Obviously there are plenty of really old sub mains or mains out there that still consist of like a um, like a VIR and things like that. So um, anyway it's a strong and robust cable um, and should be the first point of call for any low voltage installation. I'll clarify low voltage in a little box below but basically when I say low voltage I mean mains and that kind of thing even so single phase three phase all comes under low voltage well within the voltage range that's in the box um, and so I'll use low voltage for mains etc and extra low voltage when I actually mean extra low voltage. A lot of manufacturers are using the terminology low voltage for things like MR16s or 12 volt fittings. They actually mean extra low voltage. They're using the complete wrong terminology, but this is this whole kind of bulb lamp kind of debate. So yeah, but they, they put it wrong. I make sure that at least when I'm writing about stuff, I want to talk about the terminology correctly. Anyway, uh, I'll do the pros and cons. So pro, Providing it's terminated correctly, and that's important because if we're not actually earthing the outer sheath, then this cable is pointless. But providing it's terminated correctly, this is probably the best cable to use for low voltage, i.e. mains, installations. The reason for that is that if the cable gets cut, for argument's sake, or it gets a shovel going through it, because a sharp shovel will go through it, the idea is, is that the metal of whatever that is, or whatever's going for it, will come into contact with the outer sheath first. Then as it passes through the outer sheath, so it's in contact with the earth, and goes through to a live conductor, so that could be line or neutral, um, it will cause the fault current to go down the earth of the outer sheath, back to the protective device, and should, Providing it was all installed correctly and devices working correctly, disconnect the circuit at a fast enough rate, a low enough current that you aren't seriously injured or killed. You'll still still probably receive a shock, but it'll be momentary. Um, that's the idea of the earthed outer sheath. So if it's not terminated correctly, this cable might be, might as well be any other cable. It's pointless. You can go through it with a shovel, as I've said. Um, so yeah, make sure you terminate it correctly if you're using it. And that's with a proper gland kit that actually, like a brass gland kit, or there's these new ones, the speed ones I think I've seen. I, I don't know what their brand they are, but um, where anyway, the, the earthed outer sheath is actually terminated and actually connected to the earth inside the box. Um, so con, it's time consuming to, to terminate. Obviously you've got to strip it all and do it all properly. I mean, there are tools that make it f a lot quicker now. So we used to have to use just a hacksaw. Um, now there's these, there's these devices that kind of like ring round it. They've got almost like a tiny little hacksaw blade in it and that kind of makes things a lot quicker. Um, pro, it's UV stable. So it can be mounted to the wall, outside. Um, obviously it can be buried, providing it's, it should be buried at an appropriate depth, which should be 600 mil. Um, or um, if it's not 600 mil, protected mechanically. Um, unless, of course, it's not needed to be. So, you know, if it's under paving, etc., it might not need to be. Sorry, I had to change my battery there. So if the angle's changed a little bit, sorry for that. Um, 
yes so anyway as i was saying um so the next con is that it's more expensive than any of the other cable types that i'm going to introduce to you apart from pyro or mineral insulator cable i think pyro is actually the brand mineral insulator cable is actually what it's called i don't really know to be honest um i i don't think anyone's really doing installations outdoors in pyro or mineral insulated cable that are for flower beds etc they may well be doing them on historic buildings on the outside walls um, but the reason they're not used is they're again very time consuming and very expensive i think last time i looked at a two core i think it was two core one five um, mineral insulated cable 100 meters was something like 350 pounds or something like that so you know something to sort of bear in mind um i wouldn't really use it for outdoors if it can be avoided um pro it's available as stock in most wholesalers between two and seven cores various different sizes um probably well i say really so it should be two to five cores in most wholesalers the last six and sevens probably only at really like big wholesalers like for instance edmondson's in croydon um they've got like a branch their branch there kind of stocks a massive range of cables that i assume that they distribute round to, to their other branches um so for me this cable will be the first choice for any low voltage installation um, because of the safety feature of the earth outer armored um, plus in any case a burial um, although i'd probably choose not to use this cable if i was just literally going to clip it to the surface um, i'd probably use the next cable that i'm going to introduce to you um, i mean this is like your belts and braces cable really um, so if you you know if you budget for it with your client etc then fine do it fit it Right, so next up we have High Tough or NYJ. Now, High Tough um, is a cable that is less commonly known. Um, occasionally, I'll be talking to an electrical contractor about their garden install um, and I'll mention it and they go, What's that? I've never heard of it. Um, it's basically a triple insulated cable, it's PVC, um, so we've got the single insulation on the on the outer cores then we've got another insulation over the top of that and then we've got our final jacket insulation which is really thick it's a really robust cable and actually in a garden these buried side by side it's kind of hard to tell between what's armored and what's um swa at first glance it's only i mean possibly even yeah i mean bending it, it does notice a bit but not hugely it's still very very tough um so i mean really it's great for a low voltage installation if it's clipped direct if it's buried it obviously should be buried 600 mil or provided with extra mechanical protection means um otherwise it's perfectly suited for extra low voltage where you kind of want it to be a little bit more robust against damage i have seen vermin chew for it so you're not completely foolproof but it does happen so pros and cons uh, it's easy to work with doesn't need any special glands not like the swa con it, is easier to cut through um and as i said about the vermin um pro is cheaper than swa and is obtainable from all wholesalers as far as i'm aware i don't think i've ever come across a wholesaler that hadn't stocked this sort of stuff been various different brands but most people recognize high tough or an myj or something or if you say triple inch triple inch slated outdoor cable um, i think high tough's a brand but you know people kind of recognize the name um so uh con um as it should as i said it shouldn't be really be buried unless it's buried 600 mil or has another form of mechanical protection and um, pro is generally available three to five cores in a few sizes um i think 1.5 up to about six mil as sort of standard maybe i mean you probably get one five and two five from most wholesalers um in the past when i was doing installations actually two five was sometimes hard to obtain um i mean i tend to tend to have bought my cable in from tlc and they would not normally have it but did vary from branch to branch um and i mean i really like this cable it's uh i've used it extensively it, it's you know it's just a great replacement for swa if you don't need that earthed outer sheath so you kind of have to balance the two really um next up we have pvc flex uh this is a four core 0.75 mil with a black outer sheath um they really you know 
would be the thing that you would use for extra low voltage not really so much for low voltage installations um, the manufacturers don't often rate these as um, for outdoor use, believe it or not. They rate SWA's outdoor use, they don't really rate that. Um, I'm not sure about MY, um, but they don't rate that for outdoor use. But at the same time, the jacket's UV protected, so it is. I think what I'm really saying is that they don't rate it for any water, that water submersion or anything like that. Um, personally, I don't see an issue with it. I have. Um, you know, I've seen this cabling in gardens, etc. Fitted this cabling in gardens. Sometimes it goes goes in water features, etc. Not a problem, as long as it's extra low voltage. Perhaps if it was low voltage, it might be an issue, um, but extra low voltage, not a problem. So the um, so pros and cons cheapest on the list of the cables that I'm giving you. So I have four cables that I'm going to be listing. This is the this is by far the cheapest. Um, con it this and the rubber sheave the more the most easily damaged of the lot um, pro it's available in black or white in two to five cores generally a standard um, white's obviously useful if you've got like a white rendered wall or something like that that you need to need to clip to then ideal um, con I think uh, as I've already said should only really be used for extra low voltage um, and if you use it for low voltage really you should probably pick one of the other cables over this over this cable this is probably not the best cable to use for low voltage this is for gardens let's keep let's keep that in mind just for just for outdoors and gardens um, I mean if you're clipping it to the wall to feed wall lights yeah fine use it for low voltage um, I'm I suppose I'm really talking about you know implanters feeding ground lights spike lights and so on and so forth so this is the one, just to clarify, this is the one cable that I recommend the most for extra low voltage installations and, and I always recommend a 4 core 0.75 for my lights and the reason for that is that generally I would say run your 2 cores out, feed your 5 or 6 lights, leave the 2 cores spare in case your client wants to add any more lights to the to that area of lighting because the, the drawback with with constant current lighting is that you have a max limit really on that LED driver after that to add any more fittings you need to run more cables if you've got two spare cores on a cable then you're then you're sorted um, I mean more often than not you just run a four core anyway just to feed the extra lights if uh, or the existing lights next up we have rubber flexibles now these are the ones that will appear on a lot of light fittings various different brands will put them on their spikes um, or on their ground lights if they're already pre-flexed I use them on my extra low voltage spikes and on my ground lights and in fact my whole range apart from the wall lights they come rated with uh, normally typically you'll, you'll hear the terms HO5 or HO7 so HO5 is really temporary outdoor use um, temporary submersion that kind of thing HO7 is uh, rated for permanent submersion up to 10 meters typically um, I personally use HO5 on all of my fittings. I believe Collingwood use an HO5 on all of theirs. There's no real issue with it um, being outdoors permanently. So yeah, it's just it's not it's not really a problem. Um, I am considering changing this, but I will go through that in a minute. Um, but essentially, see this this tube here to the side. Um, this is where the all the lights here are tested for 24 hours underwater um, and the because the, they're extra low voltage the connections um, are literally just thrown in literally wagos are just thrown into this tube um, and it causes no issue so whether or not the cable you know gets any water water going through it if it's permeable or whatever doesn't actually matter with extra low voltage um, it's completely tolerant to it um, and that's proven by the fact that I do this test say with the wagos just straight in um, so anyway some pros and cons super flexible generally easy to terminate although you can get the odd rubbers that are um say you use strippers or whatever you know like automatic wire strippers and um, it just doesn't strip well it does happen with quite a few rubbers um, but some are really good um, con is that it's easily damaged um, and in fact this one actually really makes me question why manufacturers use this kind of cable for GU10 spikes and other mains lighting where the cable's not going to be buried or mechanically protected appropriately um, it's just going to be sitting on top in the bed and it 
is way too easy to sort of you know it just sort of disappears in within the within the um, soil within the planting easily go through it with a shovel and because we've got not got that earthed out sheath we're not going to necessarily disconnect our circuit that quickly um so you know it's a real issue and i think personally that gu10 spotlights etc are dangerous that's just my own opinion um but I was in once involved in a court case um, with someone that w received an electric shock from throwing buckets of water over a, over a garden wall, um, and I had to write a letter just demonstrating a report I wrote um, that talked about the fact that the RCD protection was missing anyway. But you know, I mean, any anyway, if that light had been extra low voltage, would never that guy would never have received that electric shock. So you know, it, it's one of those things that I think shouldn't exist. Um, I don't know how we've had it exist for so long. And I used to fit them. Um, when I first started do, doing lighting installations, I used to fit GU10 spotlight lights all the time. Um, and I fitted most of the brands that are out there. Um, some of the top end ones from New Zealand that you'll know who I'm talking about. And also the bottom end brands from China um, fitted everything in between. And all of it at some point got water in it um, and would start causing the RCD to trip out. So just don't, I just don't recommend it anyway. Um, but anyway, yeah, so um, carrying on, sorry, debate is just something that just annoyed me and actually made me start doing this, doing lighting manufacturing in the first place. Um, but Pro, it's available two to seven cores, although most wholesalers are only stocked two to three core varieties. Um, con, for some reason, animals love the taste of it. And this was the reason I said earlier that I would mention it after is that um, I'm considering changing my lights to PVC cabling, even though PVC cabling is not rated as such for outdoor use or water submersion, etc. Um, I feel that it's um, will suffer less from vermin damage than the rubbers. For some reason, um, even the foxes love to chew the rubbers, whereas foxes tend not to chew as much PVC stuff, I've found. Um, that's my own experience. Maybe, maybe yours is different, I don't know. Um, I mean, obviously, we've, see, we've all seen squirrels and rats and mice and things chewing your PVC twin and earth and whatever in the loft and PVC armoured and whatever, um, but... I think foxes tend to go more for the rubber rather than the PVC, so it's something I'm considering changing. But generally, you would just put um, otherwise flexible conduit if it was going to be an issue um, with your particular lighting application. That's it, really. Um, so, as I say, I th I think this is the choice cable for extra low voltage. If you're doing low voltage installations, personally, an armored an armored cable is obviously by far belts and braces the best. Um, but if you're looking to save a bit of money and um, there's no real risk to the cable being damaged or it's the risk is really, really low, then uh, an MYJ is probably the, then the, the next best choice. Hopefully that helps.